Hello, my Likens. Welcome to another episode of Ants Morning, the newsletter that is also a podcast. This one is titled Nooks, Pirates, Secrets. One message from a queer buddy. Today I'd like to start with something I wanted to include in my last Pride issue, but it would have made the newsletter too long, so here it is. <laughs> It's a poem I found on Rejection Letters, which is a lit mag that started, as they say, on their website, and I quote, kind of a joke at first. Let's publish fictional rejection letters. <laughs> I love the concept and I know it makes for juicy texts if properly executed, like this one I will read you in a bit. In case you're not familiar with the submission process, I'll just tell you that authors and magazines their texts and if they are rejected, they send the author a rejection letter that usually goes like this, more or less. Thank you for sending us your work, but it's not a good fit for us at the moment. Good luck submitting it to other publications. And this poem plays around this concept and this format in a kind of mm, different context. The title starts in capital letters with R-E and between brackets. Oh, yeah, yeah, brackets. <laughs> I forgot the word for a moment there. Between brackets, uh, there's usually the um, name of the um, magazine or the publication. But here it says this queer body, uh, which refers to the body of the author. Just after the brackets, um, it says single chin hair which is the text uh, that would be usually rejected, but here is literally a um, single chin hair, which is what the author is rejecting is in this poem. Okay, let's go. This Queer Body, Single Chin Hair by Brooke Kolkov. Dear My Face, Thank you for submitting single chin hair for our consideration. Again, while we admire your perseverance, we still believe that single chin hair is not a good fit for us at this time. As per our last 317 responses, we would love to see any new work you're ready to share. If you have a completed draft of a curly mustache, love lines that make one look wise and approachable, or even grimy wizard's beard, we may be able to accept submissions of that nature. We wish you luck in placing single chin hair elsewhere. Perhaps consider a collaboration with my nipple? That might be fun. All the best, this queer buddy editor-in-chief. Two. Reading Nook. A few days ago, I decided to draw Jen Campbell's Reading Nook because she's one of my favorite authors. And if I don't include her in every single episode, I might explode. I don't know. <laughs> And she also has a great taste in interior design. So you should check out the um, original picture in her Instagram, which is at Jen V. Campbell. There is a um, pink couch at the front with a plant behind it that peeks over its back. Behind it, there's a light green wall with a few framed pictures. And at the back, there's a fully stacked white bookshelf with a little plant on top. And the room's floorboards are orangey-brown, let's say. So, it has been a long while since I last drew an interior. And when I saw this picture, I thought, 
why not? In order to avoid hyper-focusing on the little details, I applied a one-to-one -one scale. So the drawing's measures are basically the same as the pictures when looking at it on your phone. Around 6 by 5 centimeters or 2.3 by 2 inches, more or less. And I think it worked because since there's no physical space to dwell on the details at all, I didn't. <laughs> and these are the strategies I'm applying to bridge over my perfectionism. Next thing, three, queer theory at sea. So in the written version of this newsletter, I included um, a picture of a fake news I created on breakyourownnews.com that looks basically like, um, like a frame from a um, news show on TV. And it's a um, promo picture of Our Flag Means Death, the show. And on top of it, um, there is a text that says Breaking news! Why haven't you watched it? Between quotation marks. And underneath it says Navarro Prieto on the queer pirate show she can't stop talking about. <laughs> so yeah, I'm officially asking you to watch Our Flag Means Death. And I can't tell you too much about it without spoiling the... Um, whole thing, so let's keep it at It's a pirate show set in the 18th century, which I refuse to concede includes a single straight person. <laughs> it's a romantic comedy, perfect for summer. Okay, next thing, four, brandishing Queen Anne's laces. So, while looking for information about the plants in the show, I found a Twitter thread that you can find on the written version. There is a picture that caught my attention, especially, in which the protagonist holds a small bucket of tiny white flowers against some kind of thread, and I'll say no more because spoilers. And in, in that thread, the author says it looks like a plant name Queen Anne's Lace, and really, yes, that's the one of the names of the plant. I love it. And it used to traditionally symbolize, according to this thread, sanctuary and protection, and is often gifted to celebrate finding a new home. Since one of the central themes of the show is finding a home between people who become your chosen family, I'll say that meaning is very apt. Um, if you don't know what um, chosen family is, um, I found a nice definition on Urban Dictionary, which is always kind of a joke, <laughs> but it's, it's also quite accurate. It's basically the group of people that especially people in the queer community form and it's um, quite important in these circles because because when your family, I mean blood family, doesn't accept you, well, you tend to find a new family and it makes sense. <laughs> of course, everyone can, anyone can have a chosen family, but it makes special sense here. By the way, according to that Twitter thread I was telling you about, the real Blackbeard's main ship was named Queen Anne's Revenge. Mm -hmm. Okay, last trivia. This plant's scientific name is Antriscus sylvestris, although it has quite a few vernacular names. In English, cow parsley, since in it's edible, cake, and 
in Spanish, and I love these ones, Cañigarro, Mardiasca, and Cecuta, starting with a seed. The last one makes sense considering it's almost the same word used here for hemlock, in Spanish, cicuta. And this looks very much like Queen Anne's lace, only it is quite toxic, not good, don't try it. There's a final comment on that Twitter thread about Queen Anne's lace I'd, I'd like to share, although it doesn't have anything to do with the series, I think, but it's still overall pretty relevant. Queen Anne's lace was used in the 18th and 19th century to end pregnancies. It does look like hemlock, so if a woman unwittingly chose the wrong plant, she would die. Local midwives or wise women could and did help pregnant girls and women find the right plant. And let me quickly point out that not only women can get pregnant, and not everyone who can get pregnant is a woman. And it's not for the sake of creating tongue-twisting statements. Some women don't have a uterus, some men do. And the same for non-binary people. Some have one, some don't. Just facts. And five, the last part. The Secret, aka Le Traversal's first publication prize results. At last I can tell you all about The Secret I've been keeping since the 1st of July, which I was able to tell my patrons a while ago. Wink, wink, elbow. <laughs> In case you are able and would like to support me on Patreon, you know, you just have to go to patreon.com slash Miriam Navarro Prieto. And, okay, the secret at last. I'm one of the ten finalists of the first Letra Versal publication prize. I started writing my second poem collection a bit more than a year ago, and when Letra Versal announced their prize, since I loved that publishing house, I thought it was a great excuse to get to finish the manuscript, edit it, and send it. And that's what I did since the announcement in January until the close in March. During this month of July, the publishing house has been revealing the finalist manuscripts titles and the author's pseudonis, pseudonism. Pseudonism? <laughs> pseudonyms. 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 <laughs> pseudonyms, but they asked us not to say who was who until they revealed who the winner was. Turns out, Paula Melchor is the author whose manuscript won the prize, consisting of one of the publishing, publishing house author of her choosing, helping her with the final edits, a thousand euros, and having her book published. And I'm taking this moment to congratulate her. I'm sure it will be a brilliant poem collection, comrades, so congratulations! I'm of course a bit sad that I didn't win, but I'm also pretty happy I'm one of the 10 finalists, especially considering they received 708 manuscripts. And the people in the jury were as cool as Javier Fernández, Sara Torres, and the teacher of a short course I recently took, the fantasmatic, painfully delicate Rosa Berbel. This means Rosa fucking Berbel read my manuscript. And that's exciting! <laughs> okay, that's all for now. As always, thank you for reading. And if you haven't subscribed yet to this newsletter, you can do so on tinyletter.com slash Miriam Navarro Prieto and wait for the email Tiny Letter will send you because and be aware because it may end up in the spam slash promo folder 
click on the confirmation link inside and you can also read my previously sent issues in my archive which is in the same website so you can have a sense of what kind of things I talk about and you can subscribe to the podcast version on YouTube, Anchor or Spotify so you get a notification every time I update. Oh, finally, 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 thank you also to the people supporting me on Patreon. Larry, Jorge, Rufi, Lucia, Chelsea, Kat Dufou, Katia and Ari. As well as my unofficial Patreons, Nacho and Raul. You people are so cute, I'd like to keep you in my pocket at all times. Okay, until next time, bye.